Hey everyone! Two weeks ago I made a video on how to make cold porcelain clay, which is a nice air drying alternative to polymer clay. Somebody actually requested that I do a comparison video, so I decided that I would do that today. I had a batch of the homemade cold porcelain, and then I went out and bought three different kinds of translucent polymer clay. I got Fimo, or Fimo, or whatever, however you pronounce this, Sculpey 3, and Primo, which apparently is a brand of Sculpey. I didn't realize until after I bought it that it was just another kind of Sculpey. But it does behave a little bit differently, so I decided to still include it anyway. Well. Let's get started! Here are the clays laid out. I made sure to buy translucent clay because the cold porcelain dries translucent, and even though you can still buy pre-colored polymer clay, I still wanted to show you how the polymer clay dealt with having color added to it. The first thing I compared was how easy it was to work with the clay. With both types of clay, cold porcelain and polymer, you're supposed to knead it in your hands a little bit before you start working on your project. I started with the Primo clay. This stuff was horrible. It was really hard and crumbly. I don't know if I just got a bad batch, but I sat here for probably 20 minutes straight, attempting to knead it so that it would become more workable, but eventually I just gave up. Next, I kneaded the Sculpey. This was so much better. So easy and smooth. And then the Fimo. This was a little harder than the Sculpey, but nowhere near as bad as Primo. And then the cold porcelain. This was by far the softest out of all of them, and the most pleasant to work with. The next thing I wanted to compare was how the finished product would look. To keep it consistent, I rolled out all of them to the same thickness and then used a circular cutter to cut out a disc of the same size. To get a consistent thickness, I used a technique that I learned from working with metal clay, and that's to use playing cards to elevate the roller off of the work surface so that it squishes the clay down to the thickness of however many cards you've stacked. I decided to do 5 cards on each side. Once I rolled the clay out, I used the lid of this paint to cut a circle of clay out. I repeated this for each clay. I set the cold porcelain disc aside to dry out, and then I baked the other clays according to the directions. Each brand of polymer clay has a different baking time, so be sure to read the directions. Now for color. I used oil paints for all of them because that's the kind of paint that is recommended to use for polymer clay, so to keep it consistent, I also used it for the cold porcelain as well. If you use water-based paint for the polymer clay, the water could potentially turn into steam during the baking process, and it could crack or cause bubbles. Cold porcelain doesn't have this problem though, since it dries from being exposed to the air. You could see in my last video how I used a few things, craft paint, pastel, a marker, to color that kind of clay. So that's a perk for cold porcelain. I tried to grab a chunk of clay that was the same size for each clay, and then I squirted some paint onto each one, trying to be as equal as I could, and then I kneaded it in. Whenever you're kneading paint or any type of color into clay, you should wear gloves, unless you don't mind having colorful hands for a while. If you've watched any of my videos before, then you will probably know that I like to live on the wild side when it comes to crafting, so I went barehanded. The paint blended really nicely into all of these clays. The Primo one gave me a little bit of trouble initially, but after a while it finally decided to cooperate and the color mixed in just fine. I rolled them up into little balls, and then it was time to bake. Again, I just set the cold porcelain one aside while I baked the other ones per the directions. And here they are, all baked up, and in the case of the cold porcelain, dried up. With the discs, you can really see the difference in the base color. Primo being the darkest, and Fimo being the lightest. All of the polymer clay discs ended up getting these weird cracks or bubbles or something on the inside of them. 
I'm not sure what I did wrong. If anyone out there knows, please let me know. I baked them according to the instructions, but maybe I ended up overbaking them since they were so thin? I'm not sure. In any case, they were all a little bit flexible, and they were all pretty much the same translucency. You also might have noticed that none of the polymer clays shrunk. I don't believe these types of clay ever really shrink, so it wouldn't be an issue with them. The cold porcelain, however, did shrink. Here it is compared to one of the polymer clays. It's noticeably thinner and the overall size is smaller. Cold porcelain typically shrinks around 10%. It too is flexible after drying. It's also translucent, but it doesn't have any of the weird bubbles or cracks, so it still looks nice and smooth. Now for the colored clay. The Fimo and Sculpey look almost identical after baking, but the Primo ended up getting those weird bubble crack things. Not as many as in the disc, though. And the cold porcelain is, again, smaller. Also, since it did shrink a little, the color darkened. They all look pretty consistent with the color. None were streaky or anything like that. So in conclusion, cold porcelain is probably the most pleasant to work with, and you can mix it with almost anything to color it. But it does darken a shade or two after drying. You don't bake it, but since it does dry by exposure to air, you have a limited amount of working time to finish your project. It shrinks a noticeable amount, so take that into consideration when sculpting things. This might be a plus, like if you want to make miniatures, or it might be a negative if you want the finished product to be the exact same size as it was when it was still raw clay. With polymer clay, there are many brands, so you can find a type that you prefer. I'm partial to Sculpey. I've always just used that kind, and I like how it works. Primo, on the other hand... You can buy polymer clay in many different colors, but if you do decide to color it yourself, you have to make sure to not use water-based paints. Oil paints seem to be the most popular choice when coloring this type of clay. Since this clay is not air drying, you have a lot longer working time to work on your sculptures and whatnot. It doesn't shrink after baking, but you need to take care to follow the instructions completely or else you may burn your piece or it could form cracks or bubbles. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that it helps you see the differences between these types of clay so that you can pick the kind of clay that will suit the project that you're currently working on. If you did like it, then please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. I post DIY videos every Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Pinterest, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next week. You gonna help, Graham? You gonna help me do the clay? He's mad because I stole his seat so I could record this. <laughs>